Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. This is the Q&A for 48 Blocks. We are here in full force with the cast and the crew representing. So thank you all for joining us. We have Dina Engel, producer and actor, Sherry McCracken, creator, executive producer, Stuart Connolly, director and co-writer, Brianna Seagraves, who plays Shauna, and Mark Kane that plays Darrell. Thank you guys so much for being here. Thanks, Thanks for, having for having us. Of course. Yeah. Of course. I mean, we've all just seen your pilot and it's incredible. Um, I have a lot of questions, but first of all, I just wanted to say congratulations. I mean, there's a lot of moving pieces in this project. It's a big ensemble cast. Um, I just kind of want to know how the project came to be. What was the idea? What was the impetus? I mean, Sherry, maybe you could take that one. Why Atlantic City? To just tell me where this came from. Well, I grew up in my 20s coming to Atlantic City. I lived right near uh, Philadelphia mm -hmm. and we would come here to party. It was really the heyday of Atlantic City with Trump's casinos and Wynn's casinos and just all the entertainment that was here. It was rich and alive and in the tabloids and you know, lots of great things happening. A lot of power brokers here, celebrities, people that wanted to be seen, lots of money being spent. So it was a, it was a great time. Um, but you know, it kind of fell apart a little bit after the casinos closed and Trump left and people stopped coming here so much. Um, but we had a lot of people that really wanted to be here and make it and, and chase their American dream uh, that really kind of got left behind in the mix. People moved on, but here were all these families and individuals that built their life here. And now, you know, what were they going to do? And, and that's when Dina and I, Dina is uh, my producing partner, but also my wife, uh, she decided we should move here full time. And I resisted. <laughs> I was like, why do we want to go there? There's nothing happening there. You know, we make films and what's there to do there? It's not New York. Um, so we moved here and um, I started leaving the boardwalk and looking at life beyond what I knew as the casinos and the, and the heyday and started seeing the real communities and the people that live here. And there's such a diverse community, over 50 languages spoken, and just all the just social issues. If it's happening in America, it's happening in Atlantic City. We really are a microcosm of the world. Um, so I just, as a storyteller, excuse me, a storyteller and artist, I really just thought, wow, why aren't we doing something here? There's so many great stories to be told and a world outside of casinos that people really need to know about. Uh, it's just rich and full of uh, possibilities. That's great. So Sherry, did you decide to make this project and say, okay, Dina, you brought us here. Now you're gonna have to star in this pilot and we're gonna make this thing together? <laughs> well, we've always worked on projects together, so it's been great, her being an actress, I'm a DP and, and producer, so it was an, an opportunity, I said, look, let's, let's dig in, if we're, like you said, if we're, you know, we're going to stay here, uh, let's be able to work here and uh, bring filmmaking to Atlantic City. Mm -hmm. And then, Stuart, when did you get involved? Uh well, I go way back with Sherry and Dina. I'm, did I even help you guys move to Atlantic City? Maybe I packed <laughs> a box or two. Um, but um, so I would visit them quite frequently. I also live outside of the Philadelphia area. It's a, it's a quick trip. And, uh, and these guys would, would be excited to sort of, at first to just sort of show me the world there. And it really is an unusual world. It's, it's a, it's a, it has a large city feel, but it's a very tiny amount of space. It's pushed up there against the ocean. So the haves and the have nots uh, are together like they are in every city, but they're very close together in Atlantic City. So we would go on these adventures and, you know, Sherry with her photographer's eye would, you know, find really cool places that I would, of course, appreciate as a director. And so it went from appreciating the world to them starting to talk about the idea of making something there. And I, of course, was very excited and and all in and I'm very grateful that they invited me in to be part of developing the script and then and then shooting it. That's great. Yeah. Um, I just I was really um, invested in the pilot, particularly because I think I knew what it was when I first started watching and then it changed for me. I was like, oh, mm. this is very, you know, comps to like, you know, the wire or this and that and the other. I'm like, oh no, it's like Boardwalk Empire, you know, and kind of mm. like 
it's, it's funny that it's a battle for real estate, right? Is that just typical in Atlantic city? Is that like the Trump influence? What that's, that that's ripped from the headlines, I assume. Well, yeah, it's, it's sort of all of the above. I think, I think television at its best can be very aspirational and we like mm -hmm. to see, you know, worlds that maybe we are only, you know, as an average viewer on the outside of. And so there is something, something wonderful about getting into the ring with the fighters say, right. Mm -hmm. So um, it, it is the idea that this place uh, it's basically a man-made place. It's a tiny little Island that from its very beginning in the 1600s was a destination that businessmen tried to create a market for mm -hmm. whether it was to restore people's health and be and be a you know a, a stop at the end of a train line where people could could um, recover from diseases to the you know the the beach playground to the gambling play, playground it's always been how can we lure people mm -hmm. people here and so mm -hmm. that requires development and infrastructure so your characters who are going to be successful in this world are the ones who are going to battle to own that real estate um, and it's, you know, it's, you could say that about maybe any city, but in particular, a sort of resort destination place. And it's unique, uh, you know, other than Miami, all along the, the eastern coast, there's little tiny shore towns with houses, but there are very few cities that have like a real bustling, you know, city feel to them. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you're, if you're doing in that world and you're a player in that world, you're going to be a pretty important person. And so pitting two very important people who are almost opposite in every way against each other. That's drama, right? Exactly. And what, I mean, we can dive in and we have our cast of characters here, but yeah. Vernon is, I mean, would you call him an anti-hero? I think, I think, yeah, I think that is fair. I mean, he's not that easy to like, mm -hmm. and yet somehow I believe audiences are rooting for him. They're seeing the world through his eyes, even as they're as he's doing things that make them wish, I wish you had done something else. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, anti-hero is what I would say a complex character, right? I mean, that's the, if you, if you write a character as close as you can get to a real person, they're going to be not perfectly heroic. Mm -hmm. they, you know, we may not think of ourselves as anti-heroes, but if we get, if we start moving towards the hero range and there is some kind of spectrum of our personality, which is what actors want to play, I believe, mm -hmm. correct me if I'm wrong, guys, but um, then you've got a complex individual that is capable of great cruelty as well as great, you know, compassion and, and, and bravery. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, that's part of what I think got people excited when they were reading the script, thinking about joining our, our cast. Absolutely. I think that all of your characters are very layered. Um, and, you know, I think that Shauna, you know, is your, or sorry, Brianna, your character of Shauna is very layered because you think um, she's a mom, but she is a performer. She's maybe stepping out of her marriage that there's a lot to it. Was that a fun role for you to play? What, what drew you to it? Um, it was actually a lot of fun uh, playing Shauna. Um, and it's, she's not necessarily like, you know, a good girl or the girl next door, which is uh, typically probably something that I would have played. Mm -hmm. So um, this was a chance for me to play the dark side. Um, you know, she is having an affair. Um, she works in a nightclub. There's a lot of things going on at, at home that um, are troubling to her. So mm -hmm. um, to get uh, to play um, somebody who does have a bunch of layers and has a complex lifestyle, um, pretty much that they put themselves in um, is, is something that uh, actors definitely want mm -hmm. to take on. So yeah, that was what drew me to this. And that had to be hard, that final scene when you found Jarrell at the end. I mean, yes. everyone's seen the pilot. I'm not spoiling it, <laughs> but I mean, that was such a crushing blow because we loved you so much, Mark. And then out of nowhere, you're taken from us. And then poor Brianna's sobbing on the boardwalk. <laughs> what yes. I want to know Mark about your experience. I mean, he, he was just such a good guy and we just wanted to, I just wanted to hang out with him. And, you know, I think that you were just, um, you know, a great bond with Vernon and I, you know, it was, it was a crushing blow to lose you at the end. I'm not going to lie. Thank you. Thank you. But <laughs> first of all, the, when we first shot that scene, Brianna, she said, I don't want to see him for the whole day. So okay. she didn't really get into it. So I, I remember that I wasn't allowed to see her. So that, was, that was really cool. But um, yeah, yeah I, I would want to hang out with Jarrell too. Uh, I feel like I relate to him in a lot of ways, just, um, you know, as a kid, just, you know, wanting to 
do what kids want to do. He, he was a basketball player, just wanted to really focus and hone in on that. But these outside elements that were out of his control started, you know, affecting his life without his, his knowledge. And then you see how that turns out in the end when something that wasn't even, you know, in his control or his fault at all. Mm hmm. And I mean, it's, it's left a bit ambiguous at the end. Is that just, that was just like a random act. That's not related to, oh, wait, oh. Well, or is it really Jarrell who's yeah. dead on the floor? <gasps> Stop. <laughs> I would love that. So you just blew some people's minds. Yeah, I was going to say, we, we, might, we may not have seen the last of our man, Mark. Um, it, that's possible. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, um, but one of the things that was interesting in the, in the, uh, approaching this pilot, there are, there are a lot of, of very interesting and amazing shows. There's one on right now, HBO, um, that start with a death. Yeah. You know, it's kind of in the first five minutes, a character that's important to all the other characters, but isn't important to the audience mm -hmm. dies. And then the story becomes about what happened. And so part of our discussion in developing this is there is there is something interesting about that sort of investigative sort of mm -hmm. pressure laden story. But mm -hmm. what if instead of it being you know the focal point of the pilot, what if it's the turning point of the pilot, right? So mm -hmm. you have you get after a certain point, I think in Forty Eight Blocks, you do, you think these are the characters we're going to be dealing with in the future should this go to series, and then suddenly at the last minute the rug is pulled out from under you and something happens and people are it's a cliffhanger right yeah. um and and so that you don't see that a lot in pilots i think usually right. it is the inciting incident not the concluding incident and that i think is probably a little unsettling but it leaves audiences wanting more for sure absolutely we'd call that a, a reverse law and order maybe the the crime <laughs> happens at the end and yeah, the exactly yeah yeah, yeah and, we're, and we're and we're still waiting for the order that's right. <laughs> yeah. The order is coming. I'm yeah, sure. Yeah. Law and chaos, I guess. That's right. <laughs> Dina, I want to talk a bit about your character. I think that um, it's just always great, honestly, I mean, personally, to see like a badass female protagonist carrying, you know, the load on the pilot. Um, when you were involved as a producer, were you, you know, thinking about you playing this character, thinking this is the kind of person I want to see, the kind of person I want to see on screen. Um, tell me a bit about that process. Well, yeah, absolutely. When we were developing the story and we created this character, I related so much to her. I, I really, in some ways, I don't, I haven't cheated, so... <laughs> I can't, no, I'm really kidding. Everyone's that, stepping out in this pile. Everybody's I mean. out there. But I always play, um, like I'm drawn to the cop roles and the detective roles. Mm -hmm. And this role is so complex because there's so much. In Atlantic City itself, there is the downsizing of the papers. And we know people that have lost their jobs and now they're, they're cooking at restaurants or they're doing other things. So why not be a bartender where you, you could, you know, pick up the stories and find out what's happening. There's just, so yes, uh, as a producer and putting on that hat, there's, I was very excited to jump into this character on the other side. Because I, I think she is an awesome character to play. That's great. Well, leaving us with such a cliffhanger, I want to see episode two. So what's, how's the, the pilot progressing? Um, looking for a series order? Tell me about the next steps, where we go from here. Right, well, we just partnered uh, with another production company, um, mm -hmm. Kathleen Trigg Jones, and she runs iWoman TV. And uh, we were actually in a contest, New York Women in Film Festival, and we won first place crime drama. And this was um, hosted on iWoman TV. Uh, so that's how we got to know Kathleen. And she uh, was really interested in our pilot and our project and really wanted to be part of it. So it's not officially announced, but we have partnered with her and uh, we're really excited to work with her in getting, um, finding a distribution partner and a buyer for our series going forward. That's great. Well, I hope you find it soon because I wanna see, I mean, if Mark's coming back, I wanna see it. <laughs> I got you, now you're, you're leaving. We want, little... it, we want it too, believe me. Okay, we got some breadcrumbs. Might be any younger too. Yeah. Oh, stop. <laughs> There's CGI for that now, Mark. If it's in yeah, a couple right. years, we can just erase some yeah. of those those wrinkles. Well, um, well, congratulations. If I, could, 
I'm, so, I'm sorry. I was just going to say one, one of the exciting things about doing a pilot is you're planting a lot of seeds and yeah. a film, of course, is, you know, three acts and it's got to conclude and here it's very open ended. So we spent a lot of time uh, with a lot of characters in the pilot and we, we treated them all different people get different amounts of screen time, but we treated them all as potential stars of their own episodes and their own arcs down the line. So that really is so much story we have to tell. You That's know, great. and this is really the tip of the iceberg. Well, I'm yeah, ready yeah. to see the whole iceberg. As Stuart was saying, <clears throat> one of the great things about Atlantic City is we can lift our, you know, storylines and characters right off the front page of the Atlantic City Press. I mean, this city, <laughs> there's something happening here all the time, you know, with political corruption and just have and have nots and, you know, poverty and, you know, food desert. We, you know, there's not a supermarket in Atlantic City you know, uh, sex trafficking, the heroin epidemic, there's just things every day in the headlines um, that just help us build our stories for future um, uh, seasons. That's great. Um, I'm from Chicago. And so we have Chicago PD, Chicago Fire, and Chicago Med. I think we, we're ready for an Atlantic City, City version. We can just go. build it out. Well, yeah. You know, what, one of the great things is it's not that far from New York and, and yeah. actors can take the train for the day. And they just, it was easy, right? You guys, you just pop, yeah. pop in. And yeah. uh, it really is an amazing location. I mean, you know, people, people sometimes say that the, the place is a character and, you know, that's yes. kind of an, an, an overreach. But really, I mean, if, if the definition of a character is something that is exerting influence and pressure on other characters, then absolutely. Atlantic City is a character and it's a, it's a really beautiful one. We're very proud uh, of the cinematography that we were able to, to achieve. And that's in no small part because the backdrop is so fascinating. Absolutely. Well, congratulations on an amazing project. I can't wait to see more and um, all the best to you guys in the future and developing and you know getting Dick Wolf to pick up that phone and say, all right, Atlantic City franchise is happening. Why Love not it. AC? That's yeah. right. That's the new tagline now. Why not AC? Why 48 not? Thank yeah. you guys so much for joining us. Thanks, being Thanks here so much. Great questions. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye now.